We recently had an event where it was in my speedrun challenge kind of thing, but this one was more of a survival type thing. Well, multiplayer lobbies were doomed, thought it would be fun to host a siege battle. So I gave a couple criteria like defend Kislev with either Kislev or Cathay. Um, so players had to load up on the siege map with an army of their choosing between Cathay and Kislev. But I mean, you could take whatever units you want within it. And you can get attacked by chaos armies that you make. All they have to do is be piloted by chaos forces. And um, up to four of them, as many funds as you can. And it was kind of like trying to see efficient strategies, see how many funds players could pour into chaos and still defeat them. So, we hit, uh, our second place contender is XMT Way. Looks like he took double Nurgle armies with a lot of Pox Riders, Spawn of Nurgle, Great Unclean Ones, Spawn of Nurgle, Spawn of Nurgle, Plague Bears, more and more Toads, Plague Bears, Great Unclean Ones, Exalted Great Unclean Ones for the Lords, and more Spawn of Nurgle. Unit caps were on, so we could only spam so many of certain units. And it looks like we're mirrored on the other side. So it's just as many Plague Bearers, Spawn, and Frogs of Nurgle that this guy could manage. For Way, it looks like he did decide to go with Cathay. We have two Grand Cannons. Three Iron Hail Gunners here, two over here. Two Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen, two more. So four total Celestial Dragon Crossmen. Three Celestial Dragon Guard, one Peasant Long Spearman. It looks like on either side... And yet another Peasant Long Spearman in the middle, Peasant Long Spearman on the far side. And who do we have here? A Lore of Yin Caster with Talons of Night and Ancestral Warriors. Okie dokie. This is an awfully big Nurgle army. Is it two factions or three factions? How many lords are there? Two. There are two lords. So this is just two full stacked Nurgle armies. Fighting the siege. And if you don't know about sieges, by the way, the defender already has less money than one attacker just because of how the balancing works on it. Um, the fort itself gives you a bunch of bonuses, so the game gives you less money to compensate. Now, I personally think that it is way too favorable to the attacker, hence the the, the, the nature of this this challenge. So there's already two armies who are both way larger than Wei's army. Since he has seeded all the load ground, it looks like he's just gonna sit up in his little citadel i will triple fast forward through the gate breaking phase as the armies of nurgle swarm over plague bears already up on the walls all sorts of things rampaging through and i'm curious about this i you think you'd want to hold a little bit more space i guess he does have the victory point behind him one supply point to help him out what is he spending his money on barriers Missile resistance. Okay, so that's a physical barrier. Well, this one isn't a physical barrier. It just gives you um, bonuses. Plus leadership, plus melee defense. Plus leadership, plus melee defense. What is this one? Physical barrier. Up here we have a cannon tower. Is that the only tower? Looks like it might be. More towers are getting built now that there's more money. And a little pox breath thing of Nurgle doesn't do very much damage. It does not. Spawn and Nurgle are first in. They're going to sprint straight into the spears and die horrifically. Oh, oh goodness. Oh goodness gracious. So what the heck is active on them up there? Curious. Yep, they're all gone. Spawn of Nurgle. Eh. Stop it. Okay. There's no healing effects of any kind. Oh, the Lord comes in and he's immediately going to get Shreked down. Though this isn't one-sided. There's a Peasant Long Spearman almost dead. A Celestial Dragon Guard's already at half health. Which is pretty bad, considering how expensive they are and how, you know, Cathay is so outnumbered. They kind of need all their units to hold forever. First Pox Riders are dying, First Lord is dying. Is anyone taking on the Peasant Long Spearman at the top? No. No, they're not. Right flank's holding fine. 
left flank's not having a great time. And the middle isn't even being attacked. Do a little bit more fast forwarding. This is just a, a really nice little choke point here where they're all shooting down. The AI is using breath attacks uh, rather incorrectly. But there might already be a break, which would be bad. That was a much better breath attack. It was targeted at the Celestial Dragon Guard, but they screwed it up and sent it on the Iron Hail Gunners. And the AI are even pushing spawn through the Halberds to actually stop the backline. That's kind of nice. Good for them. Just a big old pile of Nurgle Toads trying to get through, and there's only two very wounded Celestial Dragon Guard trying to stop them. The, the Peasant Long Spearmen are even pulled down from their little outpost uh, since no one was attacking up there anyway. Far side, two other Celestial Dragon Guards already breaking. Now the second Nurgle Lord will also meet a Grizzly fate. But does it matter? Hmm. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. The Plague Toads are getting through. Peasant Long Spearmen have come in to reinforce the ranks, but you can see that a couple of models are just being pushed through, trying to stop up any of these other guys from fighting. Cannons are having a field day up top. Kind of surprised their line of sight isn't blocked. Seem to be a little more tenacious than I would give them credit for. Nice shots just straight into here. Wouldn't hate for one of those Hellstorm rocket batteries, but I'm sure the cannons were picked for a reason. Maybe just taking out the single entities was more important. Peasant Long Spearmen still holding, while Celestial Dragon Guards are fighting to the bitter end, but they are about to die. The Harmony of Yang is really keeping these guys in the fight with more melee defense and more melee attack. I'm sorry, melee defense and leadership. The Nurgle armies are still taking a ton of damage, though they will get through the front line soon, it looks like. That's a great Townsend Knight that did a lot of damage in so many blobbed up units. But will it be enough? I mean, it didn't, didn't kill any units outright. And Nurgle's army abilities are going to keep healing things up. We potentially have a big break for the Cathayans over here. It looks like a lot of these units are going to disintegrate away, leaving them mostly free to do what they want. But bad news for Cathay is on this side. One Celestial dra Dragon Guard is broken, the second is literally just about to leave as I say that. And it's all down to a Peasant Long Spearman to keep the range ranged assets safe. Is Wei going to fall back to the secondary point? I don't know. I kind of hope so. Because if he doesn't, I mean, as a long spearmen are going to break. Archers aren't going to be able to keep firing if they're, you know, in melee combat. Peasant long spearmen on this side are also holding, but Nurgle has gotten through the Cathayan front line. Iron Hail Gunners are running for it as Toads eat them up from behind. That is a big old pile of Plague Bears and Nurgle. If there's another Talons at night, that would be a good spot for it. Though maybe they just want to use the, an yeah, the Ancestral Warriors just to spawn them, and all of a sudden, army losses kicks in for Nurgle, as uh, it's not as much about how much he had on the field versus the enemy, it's about how much he lost percentage-wise versus the enemy. So he lost so much of his force that a game just called it, even though, technically, I think he was ahead on the balance of power for most of that. Like, even right up to the end. So that was our second place winner, XMT Way fighting two Nurgle armies. And our winner... Is Pugnabone fighting three Slanesh armies with Cathay as well? I'm curious to see if he does generally the same thing Wei did or if it's different. I'm already seeing a different composition with Meow Ying, Intensity's favorite lord, if you've seen our co op campaign. Two Terracotta Sentinels, one Celestial Dragon Warrior, two Crossmen, five Iron Hail Gunners, four Jade Warriors, five Peasant Archers. No cannons and way less, less and less good infantry to pay for all these single entities. And fighting Slanesh, interestingly enough. Not Nurgle. Nurgle's generally considered to be the easiest. Generally. But maybe Slanesh is just really bad at sieges. I don't know. <laughs> Loading three armies is apparently pretty hard on the on the old PC. Okay, unlike XMT Way, Pug Bone's actually going to try and hold the walls, it would appear. Which is bold, considering he can't run away. 
If, if Slanesh gets through the walls, there is no way these guys can outrun them to get to a secondary fallback point. So they're just counting on the AI to sprint up to the walls and then stand there, which they are, to be fair. And uh, getting shot in the face. And on the far side, we have all three single entities piled together with the Celestial Dragon Guard and only two Iron Hail Gunners punishing the Slanesh forces. But um, the AI just standing around in front of the gates is definitely a, a, a dumb move for them. They've already lost so much. Like, holy crap. So many units, and they only send one in at a time to attack the gate. That's that's genius, genius stuff right there. It was pretty smart, smart for Pugnabone to take no um, no infantry that could scale the walls. So it's all just cavalry. Actually, yeah, it is all just cavalry. That's why his infantry is up here, is because nothing, literally nothing, can get to them with the armies he constructed for the enemy. That's pretty clever. Though if they do get inside, they'll just run past you. So there's that to worry about. God damn, though. Doing just a ton of damage. Balance power still doesn't favor them. I mean, it's three Slanesh armies. And the gates are destroyed, so what happens? Gates over here destroyed. There's two Terracotta Sentinels and uh, Celestial Dragon Guard able to stop them. They will be just fine, though now the piles of Slaneshi hordes come in. And I'm very, very curious what's going to happen when these gates break. That's much more interesting to me. Where there aren't single entities, what will Slanesh do? Currently just running through immediately attacking Jade Warriors is not going to run past them and take all the supply points that they could. And Meow Ying and her Terracotta Sentinel buddies are going to fall back to inside the gates. Iron Hail Gunners are still firing down from above, just wreaking terrible, terrible havoc on the Smesh forces. That gate's almost destroyed as well. Kind of curious this army hasn't just moved into the gate that's already open or something. Slanesh is pouring through. They've, they have breached the city, my lord. This gate's all but dealt with, and it looks like the Terracotta Warriors are moving off to help elsewhere. Meow Ying is also moving to help elsewhere. As Pugnabone largely believes his double Iron Hail Gunners and Celestial Dragon Guard have got this. Oh, that gate never broke. They just walked outside. Okay, I was kind of confused for a second there. Chariots of Slanesh are doing pretty good work against the Jade Warriors, all things considered. And they will soon be out of here. What is that that's happening? Talons of Night, very popular spell in this format. Not doing as much damage as I would have thought. I don't know. I'm a little underwhelmed by the spell at times, but I have not used it personally, so I don't I don't know too much about it. I just know it's supposedly very good, and then whenever I see it, it's okay. Here is some genius out of the AI. For once, they are going to move up and actually start taking supply points. Yes, do that, or run through them, I guess. Do whatever you want to do. Never mind, ignore me. What is this? Jade Warriors are rampaging. Miao Ying is getting here with full health. Looks like some of these archers are turning to actually fire at Slanesh's back on the gates. And the double terracotta sentinels are moving in to assist. Ah, yes, the, this 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 Herald of Slanesh ran up here just to attack this barricade instead of taking anything. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Slanesh is through the gates. Now attacking Celestial Dragon Guard in the rear would be an okay move, though Celestial Dragon Guard is still in that fight pretty easily. Iron Hill Gunners killing off another unit. Let's see, if Slanesh is remotely smart about this, they could just spread out through the whole Citadel and be a real pain in the ass, but they're probably going to do something dumb. Probably something dumb that I haven't even seen, so I don't know to expect that it's going to be dumb. Jade Warriors are breaking for poor Cathay. Slanesh, she's pouring into the city. No, they're just no, they're just standing here. You're just standing here. All right, great, good for you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what Pugnabone did to get, cause this to happen, or if he even did anything. But the AI is just standing there. Mm, this is why probably Anticity wants to do head-to-head -head campaigns, is just because siege sieges could be awesome, but the AI are not up to the task, and players make it way more fun. I believe. Now, if anything we saw from Way's game is true, now that the balance power is almost to the middle, if it ever hits the middle, it'll probably go into army losses for Slanesh just because of how many forces they've lost compared to Kfei. We do have two Iron Hail Gunners that have defeated everything in front of them, though a lot of stuff did get past them. Celestial Dragon Guard are not having a great time. They're currently getting run over by these chariots and a, a rear charge from the Seekers! Oh my goodness, a good play! Oh, wow, you didn't think it could happen. Alright, Celestial Dragon Guard have broken. 
Most of the Jade Warriors are dead or broken. That entire army getting blocked up inside of the gate is a big, big problem for the AI. Pug might be might have uh, been in trouble if, you know, one third of the enemy forces didn't just stop dead. These Seekers are going somewhere. Looks like they're going after the big final capture point, but there's no way they take it before Meow Yin catch the, catches them. They need to take some stuff on the way to shut down these barricades, to shut down the, the towers, to really do anything. But they're just going all in for it. Army losses is probably going to hit now that we are at half. And it looks like, yeah, one of the army's army lost. The one that's still mostly healthy is just chilling there. We'll fast forward. As the second army will probably army lost soon, and then it's over, because the third one's literally not moving, so they can't really win. The AI refusing to take any points is obviously a problem for them. There's the army losses. There it is. Nice job, Pug the Bone. Fighting three Slanesh armies. Pretty clever to craft them with no infantry, and then just abusing the fact that they don't know how sieges work. That's pretty good. I think there were prizes for this. What were they? What were they? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, there we go. Uh, so Pugnabone gets $20, and XMT Way gets 10 and there was no third place submission, so the $5 stays with me. Hey, hey! We do these occasionally. They're like, I don't know, people ask for them, but then when I post them, they're not usually that popular, so I don't know if I'll do another one, but we'll see. Maybe sometime in the future they'll be worth worthwhile. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks to Pug and Way for playing, and I'll see the rest of you later.